Hello aspirants, uh, uh, welcome to our ongoing mains uh, answer writing program. So today we have one question from uh, Indian polity and the topic is speaker. So we all know today uh, uh, we have uh, uh, in news the speaker position, the election of speaker, uh, the whole day it was in news. So, uh, so that's why I thought of uh, uh, writing one question which was already asked in UPSC prelims, uh, sorry UPSC mains 2021 I think. It was in UPSC 2021 PYQ. Okay. So the topic is speaker. So the question is once a speaker, always a speaker. Do you think this practice should be adopted to impart objectivity to the house of the speaker of Lok Sabha? Now the uh, the quote is once a speaker, always a speaker. Now the question is whether this practice Okay, once one uh, uh, at a time if somebody becomes a speaker, so he has to be always a speaker. Now what does this mean? First of all, we need to write from where it has come, from which country this practice has come. And the question is whether they are asking whether this practice should be adopted in India or not. First of all, like uh, in the intro, we have to mention, like we will straight come to the point. We will straight come to the point, ki, uh, what is this, from where it has come. So uh, the quote, once a speaker, always a speaker, implies to the practice of UK, where the speaker is strictly non-partition. In UK, the the uh, the speaker is strictly non-partition. It is it is above party politics. He is not a part of any party. He is not a party. He is not not a member of any party. Strictly non-partition, and should not return to active politics even after the term ends. Once the term ends, the speaker in UK cannot be part of active politics. Now, this is the rule in UK. So, from where the statement has come, once a speaker, always a speaker, which is not the case in India. So, here in India, this is not the case. A speaker after his term can be re-elected as a, as a speaker also. Okay. And again, one thing is in our India, the speaker, uh, uh, yes, it is said he, he should be neutral, but in reality, there is a biasness. Okay. So, however, in India, the position of speaker is looked upon as true guardian of the customs of parliamentary democracy and symbolizes the dignity of the house. So, in India, uh, whatever the business happens in house, it is the speaker. Okay. It is the head of the house, right? So here I have written, in India it is the true guardian of the customs of parliamentary democracy. And also, uh, he is the one who has to maintain or, or has to symbolize, he symbolizes the dignity of the house. So here I have, stick, I have uh, directly I have came to the point, I mentioned, okay, this, this, uh, this practice is from UK, uh, where it is strictly non-partisan and also not be able to return to active politics, which is not the case in our India. However, in India, the position of speaker is in such level. That is what I have mentioned here. True guardian of the customs of parliamentary democracy. And also it symbolizes the speaker, the position. Also symbolizes the dignity of the house. Now we will straight come to the, uh, the analysis part where you have to, like the question is, do you think the practice uh, has to be adopted in India? So we will come to the point. So here, first of the benefits of the practice of once a speaker, always a speaker practice. Now, if this practice is brought to India, what are the benefits? First of all, uh, it means the ongoing issues which are happening today with respect to the position of speaker. That's what we need to write here. So here, first of all, biasness, the biasness nature of speaker towards the ruling party. Now, why? Why there is a biasness of speaker towards the ruling party? Because it is not mandatory to leave membership from the political party. He may leave or may not leave. It's up to the speaker. But mandatory, there is no mandatory provision that he has to leave the political party. So, this is one kind of bias which the speaker has towards the political party. Here, we, you can, we can give some examples. Like, uh, like we need to, we need to justify the biasness nature through some examples. For example, decision on money bills. Now, in decision of money bills, it is the speaker who will certify. That is certification. 
it is the speaker so obviously if uh, like he wants ki okay it has to be passed through the lok sabha by bypassing the rajya sabha uh, even if the rajya sabha do if so for, for example in rajya sabha they do not have the ruling party do not have the required uh, majority so they may do it so it has been done like the recent aadhar bills obviously it was again uh, like uh, like it went to the court the court said it was okay but still then i am talking about the intent and the motive biasness in dealing with anti defection cases because it is the speaker who has to deal with anti defection cases as per the constitutional provision of anti defection law so it is the speaker because there is no time limit for the speaker to decide on constitutional on uh, defection cases so again if there is a biasness involved in dealing with anti defection cases also allotting time for debates it is the speaker who will who has the authority to give how much time to whom so there also a biasness is always seen from the speaker side again second point is election of speaker is not above party politics because the speaker um, the thing is the speaker has to be neutral the speaker has to be neutral now if he has to be neutral he has to be above party politics that is what is not happening even if you take example of today also today the speaker election of speaker is in news because of that because they are not above party politics election of speaker is not above party politics for example in coalition government now this happens in coalition governments also now in coalition governments he needs the backing and support of the party which might affect his functioning which falls under his domain now suppose he gets a party support to become a speaker so obviously it will affect the function uh, during the uh, during the uh, discussions in the parliament or any any power which comes under his uh, domain it will affect so that is what it is not above party politics there is some party politics involved in the election of speaker also third is the tenure of speaker is not defined in the constitution now if you see yes there is a security of tenure now what i'm trying to say in my third point is there is a security of tenure always there is a security of tenure but what i'm trying to say here is the tenure of the speaker is not defined in the constitution if you see article 93 now if i have gone through the bare act if you see article 93 it is clearly said the speaker will hold office until the dissolution of the house house can be dissolved uh, dissolved before 5 years also okay so that the definition of the tenure is not mentioned okay there is security of tenure but yes till the office till the dissolution of the house and also removal of the speaker can be done by the house removal of the speaker we all have read yes there is provision for removal of the speaker it happens through the house okay so so the tenure sphere is also not defined in the constitution so this is these are the reasons why uh, like i am justifying ki we should go for the practice of once a speaker and always a speaker but having said this anything uh, like absolute is not fine okay so we have also we need to also write the other side of the thing the other side means like for example i have mentioned this practice can enhance impartiality and credibility to the position of speaker fine i have proved it we have justified it it will uh, it will increase the credibility and uh, uh, transparency or you can say credibility to that position of the speaker because speaker position is equivalent to chief justice okay in the order of precedence if you see it is equivalent to chief justice so the, the so we need to respect that speaker also and it has to be impartial okay however there may be some implications to the adoption of this process there are some implications also we need to write the other side also for example uh, if we have uh, if you have uh, seen here carefully in this process speaker is strictly non partisan and should not return to active politics should not return to active politics now this is a this is an issue if we take this practice because no return to active politics means you are restricting the political career of that individual we are also restricting because everybody has right to contest elections or go into politics it's a constitutional provision if you see right it is against individuals right to participate in political activities okay so it means it is against the constitutional provision of participating in political elections simple but if you take this practice after speaker he can't be involved in active politics so that is a wrong thing it goes against our constitution second thing is it discourages uh, 
a qualified one anyone who is absolutely qualified to become a speaker like he has all the credibility and all those stuff but it will discourage him from taking up this position of a speaker it means because after you become a speaker you can't be involved in uh, uh, politics in today's uh, political environment you can't take up active politics so it means it is kind of uh, you, you can say it is it is taking that entitlement it is taking that entitlement so it will discourage it means it disincentivizes it this incentivizes to a individual or any any qualified ones from taking up that position he will think twice ki why should i go because if i go there if i become a speaker also after that i will not be able to uh, be in active politics rather i am interested to be there but i can't go there because uh, the speaker position says ki once a speaker always a speaker you can't go to active politics so that is a that is an issue or a problem so we can conclude here to conclude rather than imposing a permanent restriction on the speaker's political career so it is better not to put a permanent restriction it is important to balance the impartiality aspect it is more important the speaker has to be impartial impartiality aspect of the speaker and his right to engage in political realities of political landscape by bringing some reforms so it is better without going directly once a speaker always a speaker idea of uh, uk it is better to bring some reforms to the position of speaker and balancing that impartiality aspect of the speaker and also right to be in active politics after um, uh, after the, uh, from the like you, if you resign from the post after that five years post you should be uh, you should be having that right to uh, participate in political activities so yeah, that balance is required so by bringing some reforms which is needed which is need of the hour. for example giving up his party membership mandatory now it will bring a lot of change if you if we bring a mandatory provision ki once you become a speaker you have to leave your party membership you should not be a member of that party i am not talking about seats lok sabha seats or rajya sabha seats i am talking about that membership of that party that should be like it should be uh, permanently you have to give up separate tribunal for defection cases defection cases we all know we have mentioned in the example the defection cases are getting biased of that spe of the speaker so they are getting biased because of that affiliation towards a political party so here if we take that power of the speaker of defection cases and give it to a different tribunal that till that may bring some kind of reform okay even uh, you, you can say by bringing some, by giving the power of speaker with respect to defection cases to uh president but again on consulting president on consultation of election commission but again president does not have a constitutional discretion again it will work on behalf of the government so it may not bring that kind of change okay so better we give a separate tribunal okay deciding disqualification please within 3 months now because presently there is no time limit there is no time limit for the speaker to decide uh, uh, disqualification thing with regard, with respect to uh, this anti defection so recently 2020 kesham mega uh, uh, mega chandra case uh, recently the supreme court said better uh, take 3 uh, months time to decide the cases yes except exceptional cases except exceptional cases but in general cases you can take 3 months time so so speaker is the uh, guardian of the functioning of parliamentary democracy so the functioning of that house so we need a, a unbiased uh, non partisan speaker for the robust functioning of our parliament so this is how uh, we have to write uh, like this kind of answers to the point we give all the point from Uh, like uh, making a multi-dimensional thing and giving the two sides uh, of the thing and giving one our side ki what with respect to india what is the best solution that is how we have mentioned when it comes to the role of speaker so uh, that's it for today we come up with one more question tomorrow thank you